it is time to kick off the best of three finals. Group stage concluded after Australia beating New Zealand by 78 runs at Sydney. Jeff Marsh scored second century of the tournament after David Boone and adjudicated as the man of the match. So, first final scheduled to held on January 22nd at Melbourne. And Doug Walters. Oh, good shot. Yep. Top edge will be out. Dyer's under it. Got an eight strikes. The final record of Andrew Jones trying to pull the ball away. Young. Very well caught. Chance here for Greg Dyer. He's already taken the Skyer. Make that two. And both of them have been from the bowl. Greatly fielded. If he hits, he's gone. He's gone. His run continues. A brilliant piece of fielding by board. And Martin Jeffrey. Oh, this is oh, it's all over. Forget it. Go home, son. That's the end of the section. He's hit that one well. It's going to be. Oh, he's got him. Out of the deep. There's nothing they can. In the air. He's out. Caught. Extra cover. Well caught, David Boone. That has hit quite firmly. But uh, they're one more down now. Graceman's gone. In the air, he's gone. Oh, what a dolly. Wow, dear. It's in the air. Peter Taylor's got this. They're all out, New Zealand. The 50th over. Yeah. Nice, straight drive. Almost a Yorker. Boone did a bit more than dig it out, he thumped it. Beautiful shot. He's driven Hadley pretty well. Oh, he's bowled him. Willie Watson into the attack, and what does he do? First ball, drops one short, and Marsh gets himself into it. That's the first run score of him. What a beautiful shot, too. David Boone is looking magnificent. That's out. Went straight to cover. Bracewell, second wicket for Watson. Boone out for 47. Well placed, that's four runs. The other strikes. Oh, it's in the air. Wide up uh, the keeper, down to the boundary. And that'll be another four. Into the pin she goes. Top she goes down towards the boundary. That's a very confident shot. Over the top, down the ground. That's well played. And into the fence it goes. It's 50 for Mike Bill. And that's it. Over the top she goes and down towards the boundary. And this is a very well put together partnership by young Mike Bill and Dean Jones. Four it is, 57, Jones to 58, and uh, that's pretty appropriate. Well played, both of you, and a pretty professional performance by the batters. It was a quite easy win for Australia in the first final. First, they bowled out Kiwis for 177 runs. None of them were able to score a 50. Martin Crow was the highest run getter. He scored 48 off 72 with four boundaries. Richard Hadley scored 34 off 48 and skipper Jeff Crow scored 33 off 56. Four Australian bowlers took two wickets each. Century maker of the previous game, Jeff Marsh outs for nine. But Boone made another good start from his end and scored 47. Jones and Violetta put the last nail in New Zealand coffin. They too put unbeaten 107 runs for the third wicket to win the match. Willie Watson took two wickets. Dean Jones, the highest scorer of the match was adjudicated as the man of the match. So, both teams marched down to Sydney for the second final of the best of three. This was scheduled to play on January 24. After winning the toss Australian skipper Border invites Kiwis to bat first. It was interrupted by rain and match was cut down to 38 overs a side game. New Zealand managed to score 168 for 5 in their 38 overs. 
Andrew Jones scored his fifth 50 of the competition and ended up scoring 56 not out in 82 balls with three fours. Jeff Crow scored quick 42 off 40 with four fours in a six. Australia took the challenge and Boone scored another 40 plus score. Dean Jones grabbed his second man of the match award after scoring second 50 in finals. He scored 53 off 70 runs with two fours. Now let's turn some pages in the record books of the tour. Firstly, the highest score record. Undoubtedly it goes to Australia. With the help of David Boone's ton they scored 289 for 6 against Sri Lanka in Adelaide. That is the only time a team has passed 250 mark in this tournament. Apart from that they hold the second and third position of the table as well. Well, for the Sri Lankan camp, it was not successful tour like 1985 with the bat. They managed to pass their previous, highest score of 240 runs, yes. But altogether it's not a good season for Sri Lanka batters. Even after playing two World Series seasons, Sri Lankan team yet to pass beyond 250 marks. 16 Sri Lankan players played in this Australian summer. Out of them only three were able to pass 200 run mark. Undoubtedly, Aravinda was the star of batting department. Arjuna scored just 150, but he was able to maintain his form and ended up as the second run getter of the side. With three consecutive 50s Mahanama ranked number three. Dean Jones scored 461 runs in the competition after facing all 10 matches, was the highest run getter and the man of the series. Andrew Jones scored 416 runs and they both passed 400 runs mark. Boone scored 393 and none of the batsmen able to go beyond 300 mark. Aravinda was the highest run getter from Sri Lankan camp, and he was listed in the number 6 position. And Arjun ranked at number 7. In the Sri Lankan all-time list Aravinda was able to go past Roy Dias and seals the number 1 position. He was the first Sri Lankan to score 500 runs in the Australian soil. Now he is having 550s in Australia. Roy Dias dropped from number 1 to number 2 positions. With the runs of this season, Arjuna was able to cross 300 run marks. Despite the batters, surprisingly, two Sri Lankan all-rounders, Ravi Ratnayak and Uvayas Karnain holding two slots in top 10 batting list. Sri Lankan Kemp was able to score only 750s in this series. Out of that Aravinda and Roshan scored 3 each and vice-captain Arjuna scored the remaining 50. Aravinda was the highest scorer and he scored 79 against Australia in their final game. Only two centuries scored in the tour and both belongs to Australian camp. Top three positions belong to Australia and fourth and fifth slots secured by New Zealand and Sri Lanka respectively. Australia dominates the highest score list and six out of top ten ranks. Sri Lankans not had a good season with the bat like in 1985 series. Only two additions for the top ten list. Aravinda scored his second best score in the competition and he earned the number 5 position as well. Arjuna tagged under number 7 position. Still with his magnificent 85 against mighty West Indies Amal Silva holding the number 1 position. Four batsmen were able to showcase some remarkable performance during the tour. Both Andrew Jones and Dean Jones scored 550s each. Surpassingly, two Sri Lankan batters Aravinda and Roshan scored 350s each. Youngster Champaka Ramanayake was at the driving seat in Sri Lankan bowling department. He played just three matches before this series and had nearly two years pause before called for the playing 11. In this series he took 11 wickets after participating all eight games. Experience bowler Ravi took 10 wickets and opening bowler Labrui took 8 wickets. One notable thing to observe is that regular spinners not among wickets. Both Jagunathan and Ashoka played five matches and took only one wicket. Debutant, Tony Dodimade was the top wicket taker. He took 18 in the series with only 5 wicket haul. In the top 10 list, there were only one spinner, Peter Taylor with 12 wickets. Both Sri Lankan quick bowlers Ramanayake and Ratnayak grabbed position number 7 and 9 respectively. Compared to batting list in 1985, Sri Lankan bowlers able to dominate the bowling records. Single-handedly Ramanayak went to the top position. After adding the only wicket of 1985 series, Ravi Ratnayak was able to climb to number 2 position. In the top 5 list, 4 bowlers own their slots due to the current 1988 series. Sri Lankan opener Griam Labrui took 4 wickets against Australia, listed as the best figures of an innings for a Sri Lankan bowler. Apart from him only 3 were able to grab more than 3 wickets in an innings. Tony Dodimade, 
took five wickets against Sri Lanka in his debut match was the best in the competition. This five wickets haul was the first after 1985-86 series. Before Dota made, Bruce Reed took five wickets for 53 runs against world champion India at Adelaide in January 26, 1986. Another five bowlers crosses the four wickets mark and Sri Lankan quick bowler, Labrui among them at the sixth position. Another notable performance is both Steve Waugh and Mike Whitney took their four wickets in the same match against Sri Lanka. In the all-time World Series list from Sri Lanka's point of view still Ramesh Ratnayak holding the best bowling performance. He took four for 37 in the game against Australia and adjudicated as the man of the match for the match-winning performance. Dias's three wickets also happen in the same match. Australian wicket-keeper Greg Dyer was the winner behind the stumps. In 10 games he took 13 dismisses. Both himself and New Zealand keeper Tony Blaine took three catches each in a match. From Sri Lankan Kemp Guy was the main man behind the stumps and one occasion Brendan keeps the wickets in absence of Guy and took only stump from Sri Lankan side. Alan Border hold the most catches in the field. In his 10 games he took 9 catches including 2 in 1 game. 2 Sri Lankans in the list. Both Mahanama and Gurusinga was magical at field. They both took 7 and 6 catches each. Not much of big partnerships from Sri Lankan camp. There is just one century stand for the third wicket between Roshan Mahanama and Aravinda da Silva against New Zealand. 297 runs stand for the second and fifth wickets as well. In the series, apart for sixth, eighth, and tenth wickets, Sri Lanka able to cross 50 runs mark. As a whole there are three century stands for the first three wickets in the competition. Jeff Marsh and David Boone's 115 runs for the first wicket was the best in the tournament. Point to note is five Sri Lankan partnerships were recognized as the best in the competition, especially the stands in the latter parts of the innings. Sri Lanka were able to equal the 16 runs for the last wicket in this tournament as well. Which leaves only one new addition from this competition. Mahanama and Aravinda beats the previous record of 56 runs stand for the third wicket between Amal Silva and Roy Dias against the game with Australia in January 8, 1985. For Sri Lanka still only 3 century stands and 139 runs for the 5th wicket is the best so far. Australian top order batsman Dean Jones was adjudicated as the man of the series for his fine performance off the bat. In 10 games he scored 461 runs including 5 50s. Before this, in the World Cup series he scored 314 runs with 3 50s and ended up as the third highest run getter from Australian camp. So he was able to maintain his rhythm very well. At the start he was able to score 55, 92, 48, and 69 and in finals he was able to score 58 not out and 53 not out. His fine form helped Australia to win the title easily. This is there, there's still a chance. Yeah. And that's beautifully played. Good timing and tremendous placement. Big hit, six. boundary. And there's trouble at the bowlers in. And he's hit and Dean Jones has run out. He doesn't know it, but he's been given out. A magnificent hit. A direct hit. That concludes the one day series in Australian summer. New cricket world champion Australia was able to keep their glory. They won the World Series for the fourth time and jointly holding the position with West Indies for winning this title for that many numbers. Remind you, this is the ninth edition of this competition. Apart from these two teams, only England were able to hold the cup and they won it in the last edition, that is 1986-87. So, Australia was able to regain the title after the 1985-86 edition, after beating both India and New Zealand. While Australia and New Zealand clashing for the title, Sri Lanka were having a three-day game against Tasmania at Hobart. After that practice game they have to face another two practice games before the big test vs Australia. Let's find out what has happened in the practice games in our next episode.